Obsession and writing often go hand in hand. The Iowa Summer Writing Festival a few years ago offered a poetry workshop dedicated absolutely entirely to this topic, which is obsession. They were saying, let's explore how obsession shows up in the work of other poets and how do we write towards obsession, about obsession, and around obsession in our own practice. And this doesn't just hold true for poetry, for fiction writing as well. It's really important to know what obsession is like. Natalie Goldberg, who wrote Writing Down the Bones, Freeing the Writer Within, says that writers should list their obsessions quite regularly. She says that writers' obsessions are the things that haunt them, things they can't forget, stories they carry in their bodies waiting to be released. Susan Sontag also says that the writer must be four people rolled into one. The first one is the obsessed person. The second one is the moron, and then you have the stylist and the critic. But she says that obsession and idiocy are probably the most important. Jack Kerouac, the American author, was completely obsessed as he wrote the first draft of his famous novel, On the Road, in just three weeks. He was so obsessed with this idea that he had for this kind of post-war road trip novel that he typed the whole manuscript single-spaced without margins or paragraph breaks. Granted, he was taking amphetamines and coffee at the time, but that's not really what's important here. Kerak obsessed about this idea afterwards as well, and he spent another five years editing on the road. So it's not like he just spat it out and then published it right away. And I know a lot of authors like to mention that some people write something in one fell swoop and that it's perfect. No, most authors obsess about getting it perfectly right. So that's really, really important. So I like to talk about writers as you know, people who are obsessed about connecting ideas and connecting their their whole idea for their story, putting things together in a way that is going to be super compelling. And that is super obsessive if you're doing it right. So I think that using obsession, whether it's your character's obsession or the writer's obsession, can really help us to know not only what to write about, but also what to write. So join me on this episode of the How to Be an Author podcast because you're about to get obsessed with this idea that's going to help your writing in so many ways. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Corena Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. Thank you for joining me on the How to Be an Author podcast. I am writing coach Karenna Akavain. My obsession is helping authors just like you go from aspiring to successful. No matter where you might be on that journey, I combine things like stylistics, actual writing concrete tips, mindset, and productivity hacks into a holistic method that really addresses the whole entire writer. So let's talk about obsession because this is really important. The next time you're looking at a certain piece that you've written and you're like, this feels bland, this feels tired, this feels kind of lame, try this. Define what obsesses your character. Define what their obsession is and There's a good chance that this may be one of your own obsessions, which is probably why you were writing about that in the first place. But mine, all of that obsession that you have, dig down deep into your obsession or your character's obsession and try to really brainstorm on all of the language and the emotion that surrounds that whole obsession of yours and of your characters, and then work that into your story. And I think that at the end of having done that, you may think to yourself, you know what, I've totally overdone this. And that's fair enough, but it's better than having something that's 
bland. So that's just one little tip so far, but you're going to be getting many others in the course of this podcast episode. Why don't we talk about 10 further things that we should consider when writing about obsession in our books? I think that there's some really major issues that we need to look at because obsession's not a simple subject. It's pretty complex, but it definitely feeds itself and it feeds a lot of things in your book. So the first thing that you should be asking yourself is, okay, how is this idea of obsession useful, not only in the book, not only in how it works and moving the plot forward, because it does, but also how is it useful to your character? Because, you know, it's boring to be like, oh, they're obsessed about this because of their childhood or whatever. No, that's just cliche. But more subtly and more interestingly, think about what it is that they get from their obsession, i.e., what kind of need does it fulfill? Is it a physical need? Is it a psychological need? Is it something that just completes them in some way? Do they have some kind of feeling of lack? Does it give them purpose in life? Like, does it make them feel normal or does it make them feel special? What is it that this obsession does that's useful for your character? Now, of course, you're probably going to figure out that there's probably a problematic side to this obsession, right? Because obsession is not just a normal interest. Obsession is intense. It is focused. It creates this thing where you ignore everything else, right? So you know this from your writing life. If you're obsessed with your story, you might be letting other things go by the wayside, like work or sleep or feeding yourself or taking care of your family, all of those things. But think about this. Even if your character is obsessed with something that's fabulous and constructive, like saving children, there's also going to be a negative cost, right? What is happening because of this obsession that's not so great? This is one of those great examples of something that is a strength in your character, but that also becomes a weakness. So I think that that's a really subtle question to ask yourself, and it really enriches your character development a lot. Now, let's think about how this obsession can raise the stakes. You know that in a story, high stakes are really key in keeping that momentum going in the plot, right? So what are the stakes? We've talked about some obsessions that might have some problematic side effects. So let's take those even further. Dan Brown had a book where a character thought that there was too high a population on Earth and that there would be a new renaissance if the population of Earth was cut in half and he was going to unleash this whole thing to kill half the population of Earth. So see how this wonderful obsession with wanting to return to a renaissance and wanting to help the whole planet, how that would lead to something cataclysmically terrible. Also, your character can be maybe self-sacrificing because of their obsession. You know, look at Michelle McNamara, who was researching the Golden State Killer to such a degree that she was basically ruining her own life, her relationship, she was medicating herself, and she ended up dying of a big heart attack, even though she really caused some massive breakthroughs in the case. So that's kind of interesting. I think that you can add a good level of drama and complexity to the story and also push that plot forward by raising the stakes on that obsession. Now, whoever has an obsession often has some kind of a conflict or some kind of an obstacle in pursuing that obsession to the degree that they really want. So let's think that your character's obsessed with collecting butterflies, for example. Well, there's got to be another collector who's standing in the way of them having a complete collection, for example, right? That's pretty interesting. Or maybe if you keep thinking of what's at stake. You know, there's the police officer who discovers that your character is going to bomb a building because they think that it's going to help to save the planet somehow, but it's also going to kill a lot of, you know, innocent people. So think about that, you know, is the antagonist really bad or are they just trying to save your character from themselves and from their obsession? That's kind of fun. I think that that creates an antagonist who's much more interesting, who's not just that stereotypical bad guy. You can really play around with this idea. 
Think to yourself also, like, what is your experience with this obsession? This is what I kind of entered into this whole conversation about, right? Where I said, do you have this experience? What can you draw on that can make this obsession description be fresh, be really vivid, that be just that much deeper and therefore that much more fascinating and give your work the ring of truth? I think that this is really, really important is to find something in your life, even if you don't have exactly the same obsession as your character, find something in your life that does parallel it or mirror it or align with it. And that way, if you can relate through a different obsession of your own or something that you've been through, you can really kind of scale it up so that you get to where even one of your mild interests can have obsessive traits. I think that that's really interesting because you can give it so much more resonance and emotional truth, and then your character comes to life even more, right? Another obsession that a lot of people can have is being obsessed with another person, right? So when somebody's obsessed with another person, make sure to really put yourself into the character development a lot more. So you have to see deeper than they're obsessed with this person because this person's cool or beautiful or interesting, right? You need to dig really, really deep and look at what it is in this person that your character might be obsessed with that speaks to them. What it is that kind of, you know, either represents the things that they're lacking or what it is that, you know, this kind of fills a void in their mind, but there's this whole other context. You know, they're not obsessed just with this one person as a person, they're obsessed with what they represent. And then that starts to raise the stakes for them. Um, even if they're being objectified a little bit or simplified, your reader is going to know that there is a lot more going on here. And that's going to be so much more interesting. Now, remember that an obsession is not just an interest, right? So remember that if your character is obsessed, they're going to go much further than somebody who's just reasonably interested in something or who just has a goal, right? You're not trying to write about something where your character could take it or leave it. You have to write something where this obsession is a kind of madness that drives them despite every single obstacle that's in their way. This is how we keep our plot going. And I think this is really, really important. Remember that novels are not always real life, but they do you know, get based on real life. And so look at what somebody who's really obsessed is going to do because most of our novels, characters have to go going on, continuing on beyond what is normal and reasonable. They have to be a bit extreme because if not, you don't have a really powerful plot in your novel. Another really interesting thing that happens when somebody has an obsession, I mentioned how having an obsession can be dangerous, it can have a cost, it can cause a character to do things that are maybe not in their original moral code, but since their obsession becomes their value system, they might do things that are not necessarily in character. So look at that. Look at the idea of transgressions. Transgressions are fascinating. This is where the reader starts to get the like, oh my God, they're really high stakes. There's real drama. And there are things that can be pretty suspenseful and that they weren't expecting because your character is going to transgress what their original desire, what their original value system was in order to pursue this obsession. And I think that that is a really great moment. That's where we start to get a breakthrough in your story. Now, remember that when there's a character who has a really high level of obsessiveness about something, and I talked about how your other characters are preventing them from getting to that, but they're also characters who are going to raise the tension by not necessarily really standing in their way, but definitely by reacting and judging your character. So think of how this can put your protagonist aside, how it can isolate them a lot because other people in the world of your novel don't really understand what they're so obsessed about, right? So brainstorm how other people in this novel are reacting to your character and how this can create some little micro conflicts and micro obstacles along the way, and also how this is going to make your character feel. I often say that in order to escalate things in your novel, you make your character more and more isolated, and you make them more and more miserable. Well, this definitely counts towards that. 
I think. That's really, really an important thing to add to your novel because your character shouldn't be, you know, acting completely in isolation. They should be bouncing off of other people and society. So remember that with obsession, it's going to be mounting, it's going to increase. This helps you in the pacing of your novel. So that means that you can keep ramping up the obsession. You can keep adding these parts of, you know, the transgressions or the negative feedback or the negative fallout from the obsession. I think that that's really, really interesting in terms of a character arc or a story arc to have that mounting pressure and mounting action as the obsession spirals out of control. I think that's really, really cool. Now that we've talked about obsession in your book, can we please talk about obsession in your writing career? I think that so many of us get locked up into this trap of perfectionism. And I think that we get obsessed with getting our novel just so, or we decide that, you know, it's never good enough, or we start to freak out because we want everything to be exactly controlled in the way that we decide. And I think you need to break out of this trap, and I think you need to realize what's really going on. So first of all, if you're trying to, you know, aspire to a certain level of perfection in your writing, know that nobody's ever perfect and no one knows what's really best. So what you might think is perfect is someone else's idea of absolutely boring. Remember that you've got different readers and different writers out there. And usually if you're keeping your voice authentic, you're going to find the readers that correspond to your voice. Also realize that you, even if you reach perfection once or what you thought was perfection, it's impossible to maintain that level without going absolutely nuts. None of us are at our best always. Even your favorite writer isn't always at their best. Realize that most writers are known for one book or maybe just one idea, and they produce a lot of utter crap before that and after that. So remember that. Also realize that being happy and productive is so much more important. You're not going to burn out as much and you're going to be able to produce more works, which is really where success lies. I think that sometimes there is such a thing to be said for quantity over quality. I know that it's great to go over your work and make sure that it's good, but going over it obsessively and trying to make it perfect is usually almost an excuse, right? It's not like you're actually using that excuse to create something perfect, but it's more like you're using that excuse to delay this book that's not getting written and it's getting more and more perfect in your head. And you're using the stalling mechanism because then this ideal book that you've created in your mind, you can never actually, you know, get to that level in reality. That's silly. Think about what's the worst that could happen if you stop giving in to your obsession to have your book just so and that you create something that's not perfect. You're not a brain surgeon. So you're not, you know, this mistake or this spelling error or this passage that's not as, you know, completely amazing as you thought you could write it. You're not killing anyone. Just, you know, what's the worst that can happen if you don't do it this particular way? Yeah, nothing. Even if you thought something was perfect, it's not. Just remember that, you know, no one cares. No one notices if your work is imperfect. So instead of obsessing over getting it perfect, why don't you just make a goal and stick to it? right? You know that work expands to fit the time that you give yourself. So don't give yourself too much time and focus on the things that actually really matter rather on being than being obsessed about something that doesn't matter. And remember that not everything is in your control. And remember that sometimes if you're engaging in these thought patterns that are all or nothing obsessive thought patterns, that is a problem mindset that can really hurt you along the way, right? So remember 
that that's really, really important. Now, I do have a fun little secret weapon when it comes to how to use your obsession to create a book that could be more of a bestseller than you thought. And this is something I'm going to be unfair. I'm going to deliver that little snippet of information to the people who are in my Writing Coach on Demand program, which for under a dollar a day, you get to talk to your writing coach every week in office hours. You get to obsess over certain passages with me that you don't think you're getting just right. You get to work with me over time and we can kind of help you to get things as good as they're going to be and to get that book done. So if you're in Writing Coach on Demand, you are going to get my little trick for how to use your obsession for good in your writing. And if you're not in Writing Coach on Demand, it's not too late. You can always sign up on my website. You go to creativeandwritingcoach.com and go check out Writing Coach on Demand and sign up and you'll be getting bonus stuff and office hours. Pretty awesome. If you don't feel like talking to a writing coach all the time and you think to yourself, you know what, I'm newly obsessed with getting my book out and I don't want to waste a lot of time, you're going to want to sign up for my masterclass from idea to publish in six months. This helps you to move along so that you don't get mired in that swamp of perfectionism and obsession and instead you're going to get that book done so you can get the next one done and the next one after that. That is it. I hope this little podcast about obsession, short but sweet, but I hope it helped you to see some really cool possibilities when it comes to making your book completely obsession worthy. If you have any pressing writing related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com.